Before starting this chapter, it will be helpful for students to learn a little bit of calculus. I'll give you the method of solving second order homogeneous differential equation as below. For this purpose, we have to take y equal to e to the power rt as an arbitrary solution such that we get these values. Then we substitute these values in the original differential equation and we get this. Here, y cannot be zero because it is an exponential function. So the term within the brackets is zero. This is called the characteristic equation. It is to be solved as a quadratic equation. There are three possibilities. Case one, the roots are real and distinct. Let the roots be R1 and R2, then the general solution is this. Case two, the roots are complex. Let R1 equal to lambda plus mu i and R2 equal to lambda minus mu i, then the general solution is this. Case three, the roots are equal. Here, R1 equal to R2 equal to R. The general solution is like this. We see that only when the roots are complex, the general solution becomes sinusoidal in nature, otherwise not. From this knowledge, we'll try to solve the differential equation for simple harmonic motion. The differential equation is this, where omega is the natural angular frequency of the oscillator. Let the arbitrary solution be x equal to e to the power rt. The characteristic equation will be this. Here, R1 equal to I omega and R2 equal to minus I omega. The general solution will be this. Here, the roots are complex and the general solution is sinusoidal in nature. This explains why SHM is to and fro in nature. The oscillation in this case is called free oscillation or free vibration. There is no resistance to the restoring force in this case. In reality, this does not happen. There always exists a viscous drag by the medium in which the oscillator is oscillating. As a result, the amplitude of oscillation diminishes with time and ultimately it becomes zero and the oscillator stop oscillating. This phenomena is called damping and is called damped oscillations or damped vibration. In this case, the viscous resistance is proportional to the velocity of the oscillating particle and its direction is opposite to that of the restoring force. Therefore, the differential equation in this case is this, where this is the resistance offered by the medium. Here, C is called the damping constant or damping coefficient. At this stage, we introduce another term called damping ratio, which is actually the ratio of actual damping coefficient to the critical damping coefficient and is dimensionless, denoted by zeta. Critical damping coefficient will be clear to you later in this video. For the time being, it is the damping coefficient when the discriminant of this quadratic equation is taken as zero. Therefore, the damping coefficient is this. Therefore, the differential equation for damped oscillation is this. Let the arbitrary solution be x equal to e to the power rt as always. The characteristic equation is this and r has these two values. Three cases arise. Case 1, zeta squared is greater than 1. The roots are real and distinct. The solution is this. This solution shows that there is no oscillation at all. This is the case of overdamping. Two typical curves of this type show that the displacement becomes zero after some time. It may cross the mean position but only once. Case 2. Zeta square equal to 1. The roots are equal. The solution is this. In this case, the viscous resistance is just enough to stop the oscillatory motion of the oscillator. If the viscous resistance is below this, then the roots become complex and the solution is sinusoidal in nature. This is called critical damping. Two such typical curves show that displacement become almost zero after some time. Here also it may cross the mean position but only once. Case 3. 
zeta square is less than 1. The roots are complex. Here the solution is like this. Here the amplitude has an exponential term and the amplitude becomes 0 after some time. Until then the oscillatory motion continues with an angular frequency equal to this. Where omega is the natural frequency of the oscillator. Thus the time period of damped oscillation is given by this relation. This is called underdamped oscillation.